he was like, yeah, I was in working in Vegas and I chatted up this girl at the bar and we were really hitting it off. Oh, yeah. And ca- she came back to my hotel room and she's like, all right, it'll be $300, like before they started yeah. anything. And he, that's when he's like, what? Oh, I, he goes, I just thought you liked me. And then I'm like, what did she say? And she goes, oh, that's all right. I mean, are you still going to pay me something? Because I did talk to you for an hour. And he was like, no like he got really sad can you imagine hitting it off with someone at a Mm -hmm. bar for an hour feeling like you genuinely made a connection with this Mm -hmm. person so much so that you go to your hotel room and they're like yeah that'll be uh that'll be a thousand dollars or something like (laughs) trekking heavier traveling life there's one thing that's right wherever i go that's where i am Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week in Zoltan, uh, episode 371, I assume. Coming at you in 4K. 4K! 4K! Woo. Yeah! Isn't that exciting? I like the two. I'm looking for amusement from the two people not on camera. Unimpressed. <laughs> and I'm like, isn't it great? You get to see me in 4K. And you're like, all right, yeah, I guess. Well, I was just worried that I, because I stopped, I didn't record the first time, and I was like, let me just, I'm just got to keep my eyes on the prize oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're making sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you ever wonder how many podcast episodes never got recorded? Because I've done a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Like, where I was, uh, usually when I visit a town, I'll have, like, a couple DMs of, like, hey, do you want to do my podcast? And I recently just started not responding to those, because I don't. And, uh... And the reason is I've done a bunch of them where they just never recorded and I just ended up talking to some guy that I don't know in my hotel room. And then for no reason, we just had a no reason conversation that ended up not even being put on anything. And I'm like, I could have just done anything else with my day. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not. Yeah. I'd really rather not. I don't want to. I want to talk to you, too. You don't want to talk to No, I want to talk to you too. Not the band. I mean, Mike and Emma. (laughs) These are the people I want to talk to on on my podcast with my face. Is my narcissism coming through? Oh, yeah. The only podcast I want to do is my own face over my own shoulder (laughs) and my two, my producer and my wife off camera because I'm not sharing the spotlight with anybody. Three people, two (laughs) Zoltan. (laughs) (laughs) This is how I want it done. I'm like, I'm worse than Howard's stern less robin more howard you know that's, that's funny uh but anyway uh yeah i don't want to do you do that like when you travel and then people are like come do my podcast and then you go do it and yeah, then sometimes and then after you ever feel good after never never no every once in a while like there's a guy in uh, a, lot, a lot of like bartenders or like people that work at comedy clubs have a podcast yeah it's like i'm good oh yeah i actually have to do something that day Oh, what's that? I'm probably going to be asleep. <laughs> going to go walk the mall. Sorry. Yeah. Get my steps in. You know, New York, you know, I, I got to keep walking. The thing I never understand is that a lot of the, a lot of the, there are some podcasts that I do enjoy doing. The one that comes to mind is a buddy of mine uh, in Dallas that I did his podcast and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But most of them I don't enjoy doing. And it's, it's always, it always seems like it's comedians that have been doing it for like a year or two years, yeah. or they're thinking of getting into it, and they're like, I should start the podcast first. I'm like, you were doing this backwards. Dude, like, what, what do you mean? You've been doing comedy a year, and now we're gonna sit down and break down comedy? Yeah. Like, I, no, all of so you. It's so hard. It's so hard. It's driving me to drink. <laughs> what do you, did two minutes. <laughs> two minutes, what are you talking about? A, a liter of vodka per minute? No, <laughs> but it's like, it's like a bunch of, like some kid who just got out of mechanic school, went to UTI and learned how to loosen a lug nut, and he's just having a beer. He's like, torque wrenches. And you're like, what? if it's that hard, I don't know if you're in the right game. And his, clo- you know? his closer will always be, I went to UTI. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> but you know what a UTI is. Mm-hmm. Urinary tract infection. I didn't even Universal piece Technology it. Institute. <laughs> yeah, it's also an institute where you learn how to work on cars. Oh. See, we're all learning a little something today. I uh, before we get any further, 
Oh, we didn't even do the safe journal yet. I was about to do a fake plug for Dunkin' Donuts before, beca- before I did the real plug for the product that we have. I'm so sorry. Uh, before we get really cooking, safe journal, safejournal.co, 25% off if you use Zoltan at checkout. I did it backwards first, but I'm going to tell you about the journal. Safe journal is a journal diary. It's a, uh, what did you call it? An organized diary. Organized diary. Because it has a bunch of metrics in there where you fill out the date, the time, the weather, how you feel, and you can track your wacky ass mood to the wacky ass date and understand why you feel maybe certain ways on certain dates. Maybe you piece together that someone broke your heart in high school in October and you realize, why am I sad every October? Is it because baseball (laughs) season's ending? No, it's because Bethany stepped on my heart when I was prepubescent and it ruined me. And now, thanks to Safe Journal, you can find out a little more about yourself than just regular journaling. Regular journaling is just a bunch of paper with lines and you write down your thoughts and then you walk off like the same psycho that you were before you wrote them down. But with Safe Journal, you it encourages you to go back, reflect, identify your core issues and leave in some direction that's more positive than when you started. Safe Journal, safejournal.co, 25% off if you put Zoltan at checkout and I write you a handwritten note, uh, which you've been getting pretty wacky, I will say. How do you like that pitch? Great. All right. That was a good one. It's, it's aggressive. Uh, and then now here's the fake pitch. I've always, I love Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, not even for the donuts, which is, but I'll eat them. I ate some today. We had some munchkins. But their midnight roast, have you had, you're having the midnight roast. I don't think they're going to sponsor you if you're already doing the pitch. Really? I'm like, I'm, I'm open mic in my pitch. I'm like, I'm, you know, no. Like if we turn this into a reel and went Dunkin' Donuts, please sponsor comedian Zoltan Cassis. You don't think they're going to come around? I mean, I hope so, but. Check this one out with the, whoa, la- I can't do label out cause they put the spigot on the wrong end, but. Well, you could just turn the hand, you could just turn the, the lid. It's not, it's not permanent. You know, you're I'm, a genius, Mike. I don't know if I'm a genius. I'm just, you know, you are so <laughs> smart. You are so smart. And I naturally do so many dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> well, the lid's done wrong. That's, I guess this cup's over. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, I just I didn't even know as I looked up and I was like, that's just regular old plastic <laughs> lid. <laughs> So embarrassed. Duncan, I, I wish Duncan I, go ahead and pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was off camera right now. I hate being called out. Like, oh man, my skin's tingling. You know what it feels like? Did that it feel is, like a call out? I wasn't trying to be. No, a dick. I know I you think, weren't okay, trying to yeah. be a dick, but right now it just made me feel like you know when you read out loud in class and you said the wrong word, oh, you're like, uh, Revendez, and someone's like, Rendezvous, you moron. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no. That's what that felt like. Um, but yeah, Duncan, <laughs> please sponsor me. Uh, that went to hell. I don't. Th- they're never going to take me now. I've also done a lot of commercials, product commercials, and, and fake commercials for like TV shows, so I'm, I'm very right. familiar with the- Coffee lids? Keeping the, the label forward. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's so important. They yeah. do it in all the movies. They're like, Pepsi. Uh. <laughs> I did it one time so good. They were like, this is, no, don't just put the wrapper backwards now. They do a couple where we can't see the label because I was very like hands on, like yeah. <laughs> fingers, o- <laughs> fingers away from the Snickers bar, you know, a lot of that. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's, I, I just want Duncan to be my sponsor because I, I love the midnight roast. I think it's the best coffee you can get. The dark midnight roast. Have you had it, Mike? Uh, you know, in lieu of uh, trying to get a sponsorship, I'm just going to pull myself out from this conversation. You're not a Dunkin' guy? Not a Dunkin' guy. All right. Fair enough. Just it tastes watery to me. That'd be so funny if they went for, and you got the sponsorship, because they <laughs> wanted, like, the anti-sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're like, no, 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 we want someone we can win over. The P- they're the PBR of coffee. <laughs> 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 this beer sucks, but it's cheap. <laughs> we get it. No, we get it. We're PBR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh I don't know. I'm a I'm a fan of I like new Dunkins. I don't like it when they're old and dirty. Like they just opened a new one down the street 
and it's crisp. The logos are very pink and shiny. The donuts have that glistening fake sugar sheen on it. Sure. I loved all of it. I just like the way it makes me feel. There's certain uh, brands. Like I, this is the first time I've had a Dunkin' in New York. Yeah. Because I don't. I don't eat a. I don't do Dunkin'. I don't do Starbucks. I don't do McDonald's unless I'm traveling. Sure. And when I'm traveling, I'll I'll go into a McDonald's and it will feel like home, even though I don't eat this at home. Yeah. And it's just the smell of it. It's childhood. Yeah. yeah. It feels like a corporate mother just hugging you after a rainy day. It's like, what were you driving down the interstate feeling sad? Why don't you come on in and have some salt? Why don't you come on in and have some salt? And then it just hugs you. How's your blood pressure? <laughs> Let's fix that. I, you know what would be great? You know how Marriott, you can buy like Marriott scent because they all smell the same? Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah, they have like candles and scents you can buy to like make your house smell like a hotel. What? They should wow. do that for McDonald's. They should. Fryer oil. Yes. And bleach. And bleach. <laughs> <laughs> And employees on food stamps. So like just that <laughs> that mixture of scents I think would really come Your in. Your tax dollars making up for us not wanting to pay our employees. <laughs> McDonald's, proud sponsor of This Week in Zoltan. I see. this. I want like a lot of podcasts go after the smaller companies trying no. to come up. No, I want big corporate Dunkin' Donuts money. If they have any left over after they paid Matt Damon and Ben sure. Affleck and J-Lo from the damn Super Bowl. But if there's anything left over, I would like a piece. Did you I hear think... about the McDonald's um, Tom uh, Segura fiasco? No. Mm -hmm. They paid him like a million dollars to like put like their colors in their studio, not even like at, like it's like a subtle sponsor. Oh, wow. And then like the first episode they were on, they had people on, or they were talking about like hardcore despicable stuff. And they were like, oh, we're going to take that money back now. <laughs> they had a million dollars. He pre-ordered like a, like a Lamborghini or something because of the money. Whoa. And then they were like, goodbye. And they took it right back. Oh, yeah. wow. Had like they a, never watched the show? I don't think so. No. Oh my God. Yeah, that's so funny. That really goes to show you how much money they're willing to throw at something. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Where it's a million dollars and they've never watched the show and then they, they watch the show research, and they're like this yeah. was a mistake <laughs> whoops <laughs> whoopsie what were you about to say sorry i did interrupt you um i'm I sorry forget. no it's, it's all right. okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh, would you be all right if i bought a scented candle that made our apartment smell like a spring hill inn and sweets absolutely not, <laughs> <Spring Hill. laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> that's i like a good spring hill inn and sweets i think fairfield inn and spring hill inn and sweets might be my favorite class of and courtyard of my that's my favorite class of marriott because really? they still not courtyard but the others they got the free breakfast if it's a new building they got good gyms and it's nice without it being too nice they're not going to have valet out in the front which i hate yeah. and, and they're probably not going to charge you for parking unless it's like in the heart of the downtown area that's i love I'm, a good free parking at a nice re at a nice hotel. Yeah. Like if you're not in the middle of the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Marriott.com, shopmarriott.com, you can get many, many different scents. You can start easy. Pillow spray. Pillow spray. This oh episode brought to you by Marriott. <laughs> this is the all the, the fake uh the, the fake sponsor. Yeah, this is the, the subtle sponsor of the yeah. show. Room diffusers. Oh man, this is great. Candles. Mm -hmm. Marriott do. Attitude. At a tune, sorry. Ooh. What is at a tune? I think it's like a the music they play in the elevator? Or a tune. Rendezvous. I just Red read. <laughs> I did the exact same thing you just said you did. And now I want to crawl out of my skin. It's so, doesn't your skin get tingly and hot? It high? does. Well, oh. it's, it's like vertical. It's, it's written vertically. So I, I was just like, oh, add a tune. I guess that makes sense. Nope, it's a tune. That's funny. Oh, Jesus. I, uh, what if we sprayed out. your... <laughs> you guys just finished recording. Don't, don't I'm going to go outside that. the door. We're all dumb. First of all, we're all dumb. Yeah. Everyone's done something oh, yeah. stupid. Uh, maybe we should get the pillow spray and spray it on your one silk pillow cover that you bought. Mm -mm. You know, that's what she, she got. Uh, tell, tell the people what you I bought. I got a silk pillowcase because I want to keep my hair soft. This is a thing. Mm. I didn't know about this. And so... First of all, I thought I was getting two, but then I got one. I'm like, that was a very expensive pillowcase. <laughs> and then, yeah, my head just keeps sliding off of it. And I have all this neck pain now. 
<laughs> she told me this last night. We're in bed. She goes, can I tell you something? And I'm like, oh, I thought I was going to have to get up. Because so, I, mean, I was already comfortable. She goes, can I ask you something? And I was like, ah, oh, do I have to get up? And she's <laughs> like, no. I just want, she's like, listen, I want a neck rub. And the reason is, is I got this damn silk pillowcase. And I think my head keeps sliding off of it because it's too smooth. And then I crooked my neck. And yeah. now my neck's all stiff. That is the most, like, if we were, like, the king and queen of New York City, that would be the most, like, <laughs> like pompous complaint. My, my head slips off these silk pillowcases. By the way, you have the good pillow. We have four pillows on our bed. You have the good ones. Because I, I know sometimes we'll make the bed and they'll get it jumbled. And then you'll be like, oh. And then you'll just grab my pillow. And you're like, you got the good one. And then so you got the good plush ones with the silk cover. I got the one where, like, the goose feathers are made with, like, razors. And they just poke through the pillow. And they just stab me in my back. And I'm like, why do, I, why do we even own this pillow? Why do we have one where the goose feathers had a had I had a, a vendetta. down comforter that did that. And I didn't put a cover on it. And I was just constantly oh, no. getting stabbed. Just Stabbed but with I was the... like, this is luxury. Yeah. <laughs> it's the princess in the pea, hard, like all the way, like, ah, I've come fine. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they supposed to clip off the ends of goose, goose feathers, kind of like know. asparagus stems? Like, cut those. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat those. Get those the hell out of here. They're stabbing us. I don't know. But that is funny that your head was sliding off the silk. Mm. And uh, I got a, I got a very fancy wife. <laughs> she, they probably she... have head wraps. You don't have to do it. You know, you could just wrap your hair up. Wrap my hair? Like in a silk, there's probably like a bonnet or something you could a wear. Bonnet. <laughs> like a bonnet? Like a shower cap for night time, for sleep time. I don't know if I could do a that. A sleep cap? <laughs> Old Ebenezer Scrooge? An Ebenezer. <laughs> a big old sleeping cap. A little pom pom on the end. <laughs> the new thing Emma has is the have you seen these red light masks? Yes. Yeah, she got one. How do you, I, what are, what? Tell me everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but I took a photo. They're supposed to regenerate oh collagen God. and... This is a... Oh, I'm looking at it. This is a FaceTime we did while I was oh, gone. That's in, that's very <laughs> visible very? on camera. Yeah, yeah, oh, good. yeah. This is the red light camera. And this is a FaceTime we did where I was at the hotel and she answered like this. Like a, like a villain from a 90s. Self-care Sunday. <laughs> yeah. She's like... <laughs> Casey Jones, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> he's become a robot, and he's against the turtles. He's the new he's, villain. He's, he's the uh, the hockey mask wearing. He was a, he was on the turtle side of the Ninja Turtles, but he looked like he should have been a villain. But he originally wasn't, right? Right, and yeah. then he moved over, and then he's like, "I'll fight with you guys." Um, yeah. But but yeah, so you got this red light mask. And the first time you told me about it, but you didn't put it on, I didn't really know what it looked like. I just remember I took my con I was in the bathroom. I took my contacts out. I come out, the room's dark, <laughs> and there's just a bright red glow coming from your face in the bedroom. And I can't see. I just was like, what the hell is that? And then I squint my eyes and I make out that. F and I'm like, what? Oh my God. Dude. There's a sniper. <laughs> yeah. Warn me. What are you talking about? Like, especially like at night we're, we're I'm a, by the time I go to bed, I'm about 10 milligrams deep on an edible. Like I can't take that kind of shock to the heart. I'm going to skip, skip, diddly do and go down. Like I'm going to go all the way on my face. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. How are you liking the red light camera mask? Can that be a sponsor <laughs> for the show after we just made fun of it? I honestly don't even know if it's doing anything. You don't think it's doing anything? I don't know. I think it's too soon to tell, but I don't I'm skeptical. We'll What's see. it supposed to do? It's supposed to just like regenerate collagen and your all of the uh terms that I don't know, but according like, to uh according to Time magazine it significantly reduces or eliminates acne, blemishes, redness, and inflammation. There it may regulate go. excess oil production. Oh, it makes your face oily, though. It Is does. that what it said? It says it's supposed to uh, regulate excess or excess oh, oil production. Oh, so it's, it's supposed to make it less. Less oily. That, yeah. If that's what those words mean. I, yeah. I don't, well, you said something mean to me. 
before we came up here. Oh, no. Because you're like, oh, you're like, we're, we're really aging here. <laughs> like, we were waiting in line for this Dunkin', and I was just happy. I was going to get some coffee and some donuts. And then she's like, man, we're really aging here. And I was like, what do you mean we? Like, why? Are you, I, I feel good about my face. And she's like, it's not. I mean, you feel however you want, but we are aging rapidly in New York City. Yeah. And it's it's the city. It happens. It's yeah. cold. It's windy. There's exhaust. We saw a dead. We saw a rat get killed by an escalator uh, on the way up here. And you're like that. That trauma registers on your face. It adds new wrinkles. <laughs> it was alive, and then you saw it die. No, we or saw, you saw it saw after the fact. Yeah, 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 it was like it was stuck, like in, stuck the in the escalator where it meets the top part, and it was just. It had horror on its face, and I just hear Emma go, oh, my God. And then we both look down, and our faces just went, and then the cold hits your face, and then it just freezes it there, and then that's how the city ages you. You yeah. see horrific things, and like Pompeii's blast, it just freezes you in that, in that moment. And, and then that's how the city ages you, slowly after little thing after little thing. Like we saw that guy with the voluptuous ass oh, on yeah. the subway today. He was like, he had all this jewelry on, but he had a plump ass on him. And yeah. then he got up and he's like flex. I think he was showing it off he to was us. Like he had, you could clearly hear his music on his headphones because it was, he was blasting it. Yeah. But he was like kind of like dancing and his ass was jiggling. Yeah. He was off. like flexing his ass cheeks for like everybody on the train. And Emma and I are like pointing and like, hey, look at that thing. It's and then, huge. It's <laughs> huge. And then that, like our reaction to that and then the polluting subway air, it just freezes it's that a dead look. dead rat. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the dead rat. Before you know it, you start getting the opposite of whatever J Lo has. Like J Lo is just J Lo can't age if you made her. You could rub her face onto like a, a sandblaster and it wouldn't age her. And then I'm just aging like a punching bag out here. I don't know what it is. I don't know if that's how a sandblaster works, but I understand. I don't what know. You're saying, yeah, yeah. I think I've been sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I was with you and I was like, wait, how do you rub? I don't know. If I'll be honest. I wouldn't be able to point out a sandblaster from a hairdryer. <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, I don't know what's what. It's brought to you by Home Depot Rentals. <laughs> Tool rentals for everyday home needs. I don't know. That sounded good. It sounds it right. Sounded all right. I, uh, you know what else made me feel old? It was yeah. last night we went to a dinner party with, mm -hmm. uh, with some friends. And I liked it. Like, I, I think everyone enjoyed the dinner party. But the part that made me feel old was one of the people was like, Man, we're so old, we're doing a dinner party. And I was like, this feels nice. And and then they then somehow someone asked like how old I was and I realized that I was a few years older than everyone else in the room. And then I was like, Oh, it's noticeable. Like my like not not I'm not just saying my face is noticeably older than everyone else is in the room, but just my demeanor and the my energy. I have I think I have dad old man energy. And you, it, you it, make that grunt when you stand up for no reason? Yeah. <laughs> I peed for too long. Like, I was gone for too long because just I held it too long, and then it just trickled out, and it's sure. a one-bathroom apartment. Yeah. So the entire time, I'm like, man, I wonder if there's, like, a line of the entire dinner party <laughs> outside waiting to pee. They and all it, think you pooped because <laughs> you were there too long. Was, that was the fear. Yeah. I was afraid they thought I was... I, I guess that problem just never goes away at whatever age you are. If you're in the bathroom too long, you're like, ah, they think I'm dropping mud. <laughs> they think I'm in here turding up their one, their one bathroom apartment. And it's like, no, I'm not. I just, I held my pee too long and now it's trickling out. I'm always afraid that people are going to think that I, I didn't wash my hands after a trip to the bathroom, which I do. But I, I, always, I always try to like make some sort of excuse or, or like I'll like come out with the towel like drying <laughs> off like hey guys what's going on just to make sure they knew I, or I'll be like man your guys soap is great in there yeah, you know it smells so good they're like oh cool it's dawn what are we doing it's here so it's skin so soft <laughs> it is though it makes my skin so soft I remember when when I was younger and Dane and I had an apartment together. We were in 18, 19. I think we had friends over, and we realized we didn't have hand soap in the bathroom. So we just took the bar of soap from the shower yeah. and put it in the hand. And it's just like our nut hairs on them and stuff. And I'm like, I, I, I think that soap is filthy. Like, at a certain yeah. age, you can make a bar of lever 2000, which is, I think, the cheapest soap you can buy. You can Probably. filthy that soap. Yeah. They can clean soap. There's companies. You've seen this? There's a huge push for these companies to uh, hotels. They donate the use because they throw so much soap away. Yeah. They can take the used soap out of people's rooms and they like 
heat treat them, sanitize them, rebar them, and give them to like shelters and stuff like that really? so that it doesn't go to waste. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting process. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they do that now at hotels where they don't give you the little things of shampoo as much anymore. Now it's like drilled into the wall, I love that. and they have a giant squeeze tube which is cool but because i've stayed in so many comedy condos i'm like someone's peed in something's it. in there yeah Ew. something's in there yeah I someone's use coffee in the hotel room i've done it once in my life and it skews yeah. me out because i'm like someone pissed in that someone peed in the coffee yeah. maker oh my God. yeah and they probably didn't and they probably didn't but see your reaction no, but you're you have the right mentality like be skeptical of everything yeah but yes. until it affects your everyday life yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too late and you're asking the people at duncan like can i smell your filter before <laughs> i <laughs> your eyebrows look suspicious <laughs> i gotta i gotta smell your filter but your reaction to it is the proper reaction which is why would anyone do that but me and this guy have stayed in our fair share of comedy condos, yeah. and there was a comedian, John Fox, from the 80s and 90s, and he would, like, put his wiener in the mayonnaise in the fridge yeah, was... and do all sorts of things. And so the rule came to be, he did it so much, and people were so grossed out, that many years after, he's since passed away, but many years after, since he's retired from comedy, people are like, if there's anything left over in a comedy condo, you don't touch it, don't even look at it. You're yeah. going to get pink eye if you look at the mayonnaise. And they just want you to stay away from it. And that mentality is ingrained in me. So when I see the push thing in the shower at the hotel i'm like someone someone peed in there someone did something in there but i get i get i get around that one specifically because i'm like well i just now i have excess and i'm gonna use i'll use all the conditioner mm. i don't oh. put conditioner in my hair but when i'm in that hotel <laughs> and i'm just my beard my whole head i'm walking and prancing around with it it's fantastic it's like a 58 minute shower and i'm oh. just conditioning I, I i don't blame you for anything i use every towel Every towel. I used to I used to travel with sheets and pillowcases. Did you really? For comedy condos. Oh I'd, yeah. I'd yeah. keep a set in my car in case of whatever club up because there was a long time where I just was gone and you know mm -hmm. didn't come back. But uh, yeah, I, I or I, just, I knew the Walmart deal nine ninety nine. You get all the, the full set and I just find the closest Walmart, That's grab great. it. That's very yeah. smart. Yeah, you get your own sheets. I've talked about doing that. Yeah, you talked about doing that because we watched uh, the lady on TikTok or Instagram mm -hmm. that does a full 15-minute check on every hotel room for bed bugs okay. and then strips the bed. Remember? Yeah, she brings her own, own sheets. sheets. And then she's also the one that does like an 85-minute skincare routine before she goes to bed. <laughs> Remember that? She does this and that and this. And, that. and her skin looks good. <laughs> like It's working. Good. Whatever she's doing is working. Yeah. And I guess she'll never get bed bugs either because she's, she's 86 years old. She's 86, <laughs> but she knows how to use TikTok. Right? lotion. She looks like she's... 20 you know do you ever keep any self-care stuff on the road do you any do any like stuff that you would never do at home like as an example i have i always have like eye masks in my little toiletry bag eye masks just a little under eye things oh. no wow. idea what they are but it's just something it about sitting good. in a hotel room putting those things on and it's a little little cool on my face <laughs> just feels good I'm not going to the gym i'm not going to really help myself but I'll put on an eye mask and then be like, yeah, I'm good. I oh, wish I had this. Yeah, they're like $2. Uh, you get them at the Target. Uh, I'm the, the opposite of, of this where we went to Florida and I brought one pair of socks. <laughs> and okay, remember so I told you socks? that? Yeah, <laughs> so I had to use Emma socks. And on the flight home, I'm wearing these like checkered ankle socks with like a cat face on the front. <laughs> I had to take my shoes off and I'm going through TSA in, in Tampa. All these like Floridians around me and they're just looking at my dainty feet with my little socks. And I'm like, they're my wife's. Socks. <laughs> and she's not next to me because she has TSA pre-check, so I'm pointing at nobody. And it's like I just brought my wife's socks to wear on the... Your on imaginary the wife? <laughs> yeah, my imaginary wife. These are her socks. Who's her, <laughs> sir? Is she in the room right now? Calls coming from inside the house. <laughs> I Why actually, don't you have pre-check? <laughs> I don't have... Because I never signed up for it. I have clear. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> What, <laughs> what on earth? I used to have a joke about it, and it's true. Like, Amazon ruined me. Like, I'll buy anything, but you bring it to my house. And with pre-check, I got to go to some meeting at the airport? Nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not talking to some guy. Dude. The line for pre-check, to get pre-check, is way shorter than the actual pre-check line itself. That's it's true. so easy. Yeah. But I have the other ones. I got clear, and I'm also sky priority. But some, I just did the Indianapolis airport, which is 
pretty big. It should have a clear line. It should have a priority line. They Nothing. don't. It's only pre-check and regular. So I had to mm -hmm. do regular, which sucked. But you can also do pre-check clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is even better. Mm -hmm. Now you get to really cut it down. Oh, yeah, they yeah. let you slap people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you walk past the regular TSA line, you're allowed to slap one person. You just have to make a good choice, you know? <laughs> There's nothing better because they, they don't have the clear line set up well at the airport. No. So... They just take you in front of people that have been waiting for their turn the longest. Yeah. And they just cut in front of and then you just stand there and you go, I don't know how to tell you I'm better than you. I guess. I guess. I don't know. Just don't make eye contact. What are you flying? You're a missionary. That's why you're flying. I'm flying for business. You're trying to make people do Jesus stuff. I'm just I'm I'm telling <laughs> jokes at a at a at a fundraiser for abused kids, you know? That's <laughs> that what you're I, abusing. <laughs> yeah, that you're abusing. <laughs> Church guy. Full circle. Full circle, bud. That was actually my show this past weekend. I did a, it was a fundraiser in Anderson, Indiana at the Harris Casino. Oh. Uh, Interesting for, place to hold a fundraiser. A yeah. Casino. As soon as you walk in, smells like cigarettes in the, in the AC vents. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, they did an hour, an entire 60 minute talk about abusing kids and why they need they need money so we can stop this abuse and then i had to follow that with comedy how do you how does money stop abuse i think they pay the abusers to cut it out <laughs> i think that's what it is they're like listen we struck a deal with the local child that's abusers a deal. let's try another word <laughs> struck a deal. Raise, raise your hand if nope don't do that either don't raise your hand to people <laughs> We we uh we uh we diplomatically negotiated yeah. the release of these hostages. I but yeah they, it was funny because like it was a long, it was a long. They they said it was going to start at eight, and I should be on at about eight thirty. Mm. I ended up getting on stage at like nine oh four. Buddy, my so, clock was ticking at eight thirty. Yeah, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I'm doing an hour. Well, now I'm doing twenty six minutes that's because I, I I'm off at nine thirty. So. That's true, but they were also paying me so so much that I like I couldn't. Sure, you just won an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one of those. You want me to hit some of these kids for you. <laughs> it was one of those checks that I got where I'm like, I have to do my full time, and I. Even no matter how bad it goes, I have to stand there and take it. Yeah. Because this is so much. And uh, um, I've actually, I don't, I said this to you when I got back. I go, I used to bomb at corporate events and it used to hurt my feelings. And I would get dry mouth and I would try so hard to just do well. And now, I'm like a seasoned sex worker where I just stare at the ceiling and let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just look straight ahead and I go, whatever, dude. You pick one spot in the back of the room. Yep. And, and, I not just, a person. and I just glare at it. Yeah. And, I, and I, don't get me wrong, I try. I do different jokes, maybe mix in some crowd work. But when yeah. it doesn't work, it doesn't shatter my heart. Because yeah. it's not like I'm. I'm like, no, I have a real show next week, and th if it happens there, I'll be panicked. Instead of a set list on the stool, you just put the check. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're looking for inspiration. You look down and you go, oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it also makes you wonder. Remember when we went through and we're like, which foundations does the money actually go to the mm. thing? And uh, I remember, I because I had that moment. Because we didn't even negotiate. They just offered this amount of money. And I was like, okay. And uh, and then I did it. And then, like, the head of their company, the head of their foundation was this fancy British guy with trendy glasses. Oh, and it. I'm like, they shipped this guy in from London to live in Anderson, Indiana, and be the head of their company? Like, man, they must be really raking it in. And... Uh, and I'm sure they do a lot of, like, all the people that work with the kids gave a speech. And I'm like, I, they do a lot of great work. Sure. But at the same time, I was like, man, <laughs> are paying for green cards? Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we do? My favorite part was right before I went up, these two people went up there and they're like, all right, now we're going to ask for money. And they had their goal for this one part of their many fundraisers where they had a heart and their goal for that fundraiser was three thousand mm. dollars and they were at eleven $1 hundred dollars and they're like come on you guys we really need this and it wasn't going up it got to the point where i'm like i'm about to donate because i just want to go on stage yeah i just want to get to the comedy part so i was like trying to figure out how to donate and i think i wrote the wrong number into the thing because i went to this 
other thing and the, and it was for cows it was like do you want how much do you want to uh do you want to bid on this bovine and i'm like i must have gone on the wrong this isn't for the kids and now you own a bull now i own a <laughs> bull in like wisconsin or somewhere <laughs> But uh, the best part was it was at eleven hundred dollars forever, and then all of a sudden it jumped to seven grand, and I think it was just like one person that was like, "I want these people to quit talking. We have to get home," and they just went, "Here's six thousand dollars," and then it blew, and then they're like, "Whoa, we hit it! All right!" And then they brought me up, and I was like, "Can we give a round of applause for that one person that donated <laughs> all that money?" And everyone laughed, and they're like, "Yeah." The one person who has so much money but can't count. Yeah. <laughs> You you could, it to. did not have to be that much money, guy. <laughs> you overshot it. How did so you make hard. so much? <laughs> oh, it was so funny. But it was still a casino. So like there was it was an audience in their theater and then there was a section of middle aged women that were saying they all had the same shirt on, sassy and sixty. And I was like, What is all these shirts? And they're like, It's her birthday. Woo! And I'm like, <laughs> Wait, did you know about the fundraiser or did you just happen to like, no, we're just here to see you. And I was like, this is either the best accident or the best planned 60th birthday party where you ended up at an abused child fundraiser at the casino. Could you imagine going to see them being like, I, oh, we got tickets to a Zoltan show. <laughs> and then they sit down and they're just like all these kids being like, my dad used to poke my eyes with what <laughs> he used to put cigarettes out on my forehead his You're like, act oh is my. so much different on instagram <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a weird traveling circus we got here <laughs> it's it was so it was actually it was it looked like a sketch off the office you yeah. know how they used to do like those like before the show starts here's a wacky interaction yeah. and it's just like a bunch of 60 year olds celebrating their friend's birthday at a at a fundraiser for abused kids that so much it was perfect it was perfect, and the irony was not lost on anybody when I brought it up. They're like, yeah, that is about as bizarre as it gets. That's so good. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know how we got on that, but that was my weekend. I spent one night in uh, in Anderson, Indiana, doing that. But then the, before that, I did your barbershop show. Murdered. So fun. Full crush. It was so fun. That was the, I needed that set. You said that when you got off stage. You, he whispered, and he goes, hey, man. I needed that. <laughs> I really needed that. I was like, oh, man. He said it in a whisper. He must mean it. Because <laughs> the night before, I did uh, stand up, new, uh, uh, stand, the stand. Yeah. And the upstairs room, not the good downstairs yeah. room. And I died a death of a thousand deaths up there. It's very possible at that place. It, that room, the top, the downstairs is great. The upstairs is like, it's impossible. And I actually sat in the back for uh, Ron and Hirschberg. Mm -hmm. He's super funny. And he did, did way better than me, but it still wasn't the best set. And I realized why that room's so hard. It's because you can hear the entire bar outside. And there's yeah. a side door that just opens every two seconds with the server or someone going to pee and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's I get why it's a rough room. But I felt so sad after that set. And then I knew I had a fundraiser to do on Saturday, which was probably going to be a kick in the pants. And then I had so much fun at your barbershop show yeah. that I was like, I needed that. Like that high is going to get me through, got me over last night and will hopefully get me through whatever tomorrow night's going to be. <laughs> like this is what I need. And uh, yeah, I loved you, man. That was no, a good time. It was fun because I, I wrote a joke on the subway about the hairy legs on the women. Uh -huh. And then I did it and it worked immediately. Yeah. And then I knew it was a good joke because I did it at the fundraiser and it worked at the fundraiser. Yeah. Because the show in Queens was at a cool barber shop and everyone was cool and trendy in New York and stuff. And, uh, and the bit worked where it wasn't even a full fleshed out joke. It's just I saw a woman with hairy legs on the G train. And it, I just naturally thought of the movie uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, yeah. the scene where he's on the bus and the pantyhose are down and the bus driver hits on him like, oh, yeah, I like that. Natural, just like God made you. And it's I hope you got somewhere warm to go tonight. Yeah, yes. <laughs> he just had that wet way of talking. Like, Mwah. You're the guy reminds me of my grandfather. Every time I see that, that's kind of what he sounded and looked like. Yeah. He, like, he kind of clicked his teeth when he talked. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, he had oh, to, pop up. <laughs> yeah, he, had to, he had to jam his dentures back up into his gum line like, mmm, you got to, just like god made you i, I bet like you <laughs> yeah. and then he covered his knees i bet you if uh 
if every woman that didn't shave his legs got hit on by a bus driver like that guy from Mrs. Doubtfire, they'd be in the tub that night going, weep, weep, <laughs> like we're getting rid of that. a hatchet, cutting, them back, <laughs> cutting their legs off below the knees. <laughs> They're shaving with a machete in, <laughs> in, a, in a bathtub that night. But, uh, which I don't, I'm, I don't know if I've, I'm grossed out by all body hair. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I, first of all, a man or woman or whatever you identify as, like armpit hair, grosses me out because you know me. I got the thickest thatch of armpit hair that a person could have. I have to hack that stuff down if we're going to the beach, and especially like if you're at a party or something, cover your armpit hair. Because one time there was like a table with all the food, and some dude with no sleeves was just reaching over letting mm -hmm. his thatch trickle over all nope. the chips and the dips and stuff <laughs> no. and i'm like what if a little follicle or some pit dandruff sprinkles down onto one of these ruffles gets stuck in the ridges and now we're all over there eating your armpits man get yeah. out of here have some class get some sleeps i don't think men should trim their armpits I, no, no no i'm not saying they should i'm just saying wear full sleeves if you're gonna reach over food mm. I is guess. it offensive for a man to say they don't like armpit hair in a woman? Because it feels sexist, mm. but also like I know like I know some women love like burly men. You know what I mean? Sure, it's like, with the with like, the thick chest yeah, hair. That's yeah. like a specific type of mm -hmm. thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, is mm -hmm. that as a woman? You're a woman, right? <laughs> is that, my Let me check. <laughs> let me check my armpits. <laughs> Is uh is that a is that like I know it's is that sexist? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I, I think know. it's I think a it's preference. Just preference. Yeah. Good. You know. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start <laughs> replying to those tweets then. <laughs> People think I'm. I, you know what it's what it is is I have a hard face to hide during the reveal. <laughs> That's what it is because I remember years ago I was at a party and there was a friend of a friend. And she had uh, just a good little thatch of armpit hair. Yeah. And uh, I didn't care, but the reveal gave me a face that I think everyone could see. Yeah. It was just like oh, yeah, she right. reached up to grab something, and I just went. <laughs> and then, uh, and, but I'm like, no, that's great. But that's just my gut reaction to what I just saw. Yeah. That's all. Can I, can I tell us? I wasn't planning on bringing this up from the party I threw last night. Yeah. So we hired a lady to be like a bartender but like where it was a bachelor party yeah to like be a bartender no nudity it was you know very classy it was a class she's just making drinks yeah, making drinks in her underwear whatever okay <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever <laughs> was, was, that, said, was that her decision or no, was that we in the like, contract we hired someone who would normally pit takes her clothes off for money but we said you know we're not looking for that yeah. you know just like you know wear something revealing just like cutesy whatever and it was fine it was nice it, was, it wasn't yeah. like gross and weird the person that they sent us the photo of and the person that showed up were not even from the same continent. I'll say that. Uh, I mean, if you think of just pure opposites, you know? It'd be like they hired, it's, it'd be like they, they sent a photo of you, Emma, and then I showed up. Like, that's the difference of what these people, what was happening. And But she also, I saw her, like, reaching for a drink or something to make, and it was full full hair oh. hairy armpits oh. yeah it was very very unique yeah experience. and you're like i'm i'm going to do the old fashioned without the 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 orange peel kind of the old fashioned you know what make that a new fashion <laughs> yeah, i prefer the new version the yeah, updated you, version you the order modern it. fashion can i get a upscale fashion <laughs> can i get a drink in a can i'll open it yeah. just hand it over <laughs> i don't want any hey i don't know hair grosses me out man it's weird and it's then she stayed after her contractual obligations and she put pajamas on and hung out and drank and oh partied with us the rest of the night it was kind of fun oh yeah. okay i don't know what i couldn't understand a word she said and it wasn't an accent i think she just came really banged up like drunk already oh she, so came she was kind of slurry and like i didn't understand anything but she was a good time you know what would be? She was fun. She's very sweet. You know what would be dark and funny is if that photo. Her armpit she, hair. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the photo she sent as the pitch to you was her just from years ago, and she's like, "I've had a hard life," and I'm like, "Whoa, you changed races." Yeah, <laughs> like, how did you? It's weird that you become became Pakistani. Yeah. Like, how did you? <laughs> You really figured that one out, huh? How did you, what happened? Well, it was a service. I just call, I just Googled it because we had somebody, and surprisingly, they flaked on wow. us. What I didn't yeah. expect that. Um, and then you she had was very the... sweet, very kind. You know, it was a really fun, classy event, but it was just... And she was great, and she was very pretty and cute. It was right. no, no, no thing disappointing. It was just very funny. It, that is funny. The difference in which... Yeah, as soon as... I ordered a lemonade, and I got a glass of milk. You know what <laughs> I mean? Glass. Like, whoa, what the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> flavor. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Yeah, it would be funny to like, because because she wasn't a bartender; she was labeled as a as an exotic dancer. Sure. And you're like, yeah, but you can make drinks. Well, we, that's right? what we pitched though. Yeah. I, when I called the service, I said, "This is what we're looking for." They're like, oh, we got someone perfect for that. I wonder if like rich, creepy dudes ever do that with other jobs, like uh, like an accountant. Yeah. Like, hey, I know you're an exotic dancer, but. I kind of want to talk to you about my accounting. Can you just plug in what I say into TurboTax, and then we'll make eye contact while you do that. <laughs> yeah, I know you're a dancer, but how are you at Excel? How are you at Excel? <laughs> it was funny because I was la I, we were touring a, an apartment because we're moving. And we're looking for a new place, and as the realtor was meeting us, I was like frantically texting and calling the stri the stripper person, <laughs> and, and and he introduced himself to my fiance, and and she goes, "Oh, give him a second. He's." He's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> You're over there. Hello, lemonade. <laughs> Are we still on for midnight? We're still on for a delicious beverage. Uh, and then I, they wanted me to Apple pay them a deposit, and then I went to do it, and they were like, uh, don't do that. This is a fraudulent, scammed, flagged phone number. Oh, Apple's like, don't do Apple's like, don't do this. Oh, my God. And then I was like, uh, I can't. It's not letting me go through. Can I just give you cash? And I was like, well, they're not coming. And she came. Oh, wow, yeah, that's cool. nice yeah. when shady businesses come through. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, it was a good time. That's really funny. I uh, that reminds me. I don't want to out their name. But remember when I told you the story about the guy that opened for me in Cleveland? Just, where he say it, Jim Gaffigan. Jim, Ga <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jim Gaffigan. Uh, but he's so he's like a he, he doesn't seem like he should be gullible, but he is. And he was like, yeah, I was in working in Vegas and I chatted up this girl at the bar and we were really hitting it off. Oh, yeah, and ca that. she came back to my hotel room and she's like, all right, it'll be three hundred dollars like before they started yeah. anything. And he that's when he's like, what? Oh, I, he goes, I just thought you liked me. And I'm like, that is such a sweet and vulnerable <laughs> thing to display to someone who does this for a profession yeah and then i'm like what did she say and she goes oh that's all right i mean are you still gonna pay me something because i did talk to you for an hour and he was like no like he got really sad and defensive and went no i'm not paying you anything like can you imagine hitting it off with someone at a mm -hmm. bar for an hour feeling like you genuinely made a connection with this mm -hmm. person so much so that you go to your hotel room and they're like yeah that'll be uh that'll be a thousand dollars or something like oh no. how do you go to sleep after that how do you wind down you just yeah. like put on seinfeld and close yeah. your eyes <laughs> How do, you, how do you, like, live the rest of the night? There's no way that he just, like, pulled the covers up and went, hmm. <laughs> he just locked the door and then put his eye masks on and went to sleep. <laughs> just like, so ah, well, huh, tomorrow's another day. Man, that would hurt my heart yeah. if I was, like, you just get tricked like that right at the last second. You're like, oh, my God, I thought you liked me. I'm like, no. What are you, an idiot? I like, thought about this, though. What about the other side? What about women that go to Vegas and they're, like, hitting on a guy and every guy just thinks that every woman's a hooker? in vegas like and then so they don't so women no, now have every woman's getting accused of being a hooker yeah like, you're like oh hey what are you doing like not tonight lady i'm not buying like <laughs> no i'm just i'm here for a conference i saw you were wearing a lanyard yeah I you had a badge on <laughs> what, uh, engineer coding like yeah. i thought we were doing that. we were networking oh that's so funny because i am pretty i'm i'm gullible too in that sense, like, I remember last night at the dinner party where I missed, I hugged the air. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't make eye contact with the right person. I thought <laughs> we were all saying goodbye. There was, like, six of us there, or five of us not counting me. And we were all saying bye, and everyone kind of crowded us as we left. And then I thought I was going to hug this dude named Sam. And I went, but I didn't, I looked, because he was at the side of me. So I didn't look at him as I came in. I just went. And he just assumed I was hugging some dude over here. So I just kind of just hugged the air. I just I just missed him. And I hugged the air. And he goes, whoa, were you trying to hug me? And I was like, yeah, I thought. But then I thought you didn't want it. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then we hugged. And then everyone laughed really hard about that. And I think harder after we left. Like I heard it echoing down the hall as, as we were leaving. And saying, he's so old. Yeah, he's, he's hugging the air. Jesus, and Emma's like, did you hug cataracts. the air? And I'm like, yeah, I got confused. Confused. I got confused. I thought, I don't know. So sometimes I get, I get gullible and and lost. Sure. You know, it happens sure to do. the best of us. Um, no, we didn't get to any of my. Li are, how are we doing on time on this one? Fifty. 
50. I think that's good because we're recording two episodes, not to show you how the sausage is made. Uh, but <laughs> natural casings. Natural casings. This is how it's made. We're recording two episodes. Uh, so that's it for this week. Don't forget to get yourself a safe journal. Safejournal.co. Zoltan at checkout. 25% off. Go to ZoltanComedy.com. Come see me on tour. You know? Okay. That was the pitch for that. <laughs> and uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Come on, man. Set it up. Till next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Trekking heavier, traveling light.